Welcome to Advent 4. I don't know about you but it feels to me like Advent has gone so quickly and uh, we are Christmas upon us before we know it. This weekend is our last weekend of Advent and so our worship is for Advent and yet we are already thinking and looking towards Christmas. Our Christmas services, such as they are, are already in train. So if you haven't made your Chris single, then uh, please do look back at the Christmas page on our website or in our social media feeds to see the Chris single video. Our first set of carols was Friday evening and I hope that you sang along beautifully loud to that. They are both still available on the website and they will remain so, so you can watch them and listen to them again and sing along as, uh, as often as you like. They'll be there for quite a while. This coming week, so we are moving back from Christmas with the carols to Advent 4 and then the week looks a little bit like this. Monday night, so tomorrow night, is a second carol service. This time it's a slightly more reflective quieter service with um, some very beautiful carols that you can listen to rather than sing on. You can sing to, but some very lovely carols to listen to. And it's deliberately on the night which is the longest night of the year, the, uh, the night of the solstice, so that it kind of carries the expectation of the feel of the service. We've put it on the longest night because we recognise and the service recognises that although Normally, Christmas is uh, seemingly a jolly time and there's lots of bells and cheer and, and all of that kind of thing. It isn't for everyone and some people, even without this year, are bereaved or distressed or lonely or anxious or ill. And so this service recognises that there is darkness in our world and there are many people who are not full of the Christmas spirit in quite the same way that we would often see it. Uh, no Christmas sweaters and, and jingle bells and all the rest of it. And so this service gives us a chance to look for the hope and look for that light which is still there in the darkness. The music again is um, by the people that we've used for quite a lot of our Christmas services and that's St Martin in the Fields. The St Martin's Voices uh, have recorded some very beautiful, some slightly different Christmas carols and just for you to be able to be and recognise that there is a much slower, much more reflective feel to that. That's Monday night, tomorrow night at 7. Then we have hopefully still one more set of carols that we need to sneak in somewhere and um, to be honest I'm not quite sure where yet. Uh, and then we have the nativity. The nativity parts are coming in. Um, so thank you so much junior church uh, members or junior church parents for doing those. That's a vast amount of editing for us and that will release on Christmas Eve at 6pm. So the same places online. We can't grab everybody together, 200 people in the church. Mm -mm. Uh, but it will be hilarious, I think is the main word. On Christmas Eve itself, we will do three services, one at 11, that will be at, at St Peter's. So if you came to the market, you'll have seen that we can fit a one-way system in on Sunderland Road and out onto Moor Lane and the Hall car park. So outside, outside, thermals on, outside St Peter's on Christmas Eve, 11 o'clock, there will be a communion service. So if you would like to receive communion for Christmas, please come along at 11. One o'clock, there will be not the nativity, not the crib service, but there will be a Christmas story. It will be a nativity of sorts, possibly not as you've ever seen before. This will be uh, the Christmas story and because we're outside, we'll be able to sing carols. So um, what we will do is put all of the words that the, uh, you'll need for the carols onto uh, a web page. So if you don't want to have to pick up a book, then you can bring your own phones and you can follow along on your phone. There will be some carol sheets available that we'll ask you to take away afterwards. And then at three o'clock, the third service will be a much uh, less, the Christmas story won't be formal, but there will be uh, a more informal service at three o'clock. And that will be 
mainly carols. It will be there will be a prayer to begin and end, of course, but it will be carols. We are so aware that people have missed singing so much. Um, that service will be basically community carols around the Christmas tree. So there will still be the prayer hearts if you had wanted to remember a loved one uh, on the Christmas tree. There will be mulled wine and um, there might even be some, some mulled wine and not just mulled punch, uh, fruit punch um, and probably coffee as well, maybe some hot chocolate. Uh, so that is much more of a sense of just being able to gather. There will still be all of the Covid secure measures in place. It will still be um, secure system in, one way system in, the track and trace will be running and we'll have stewards on the gate. There will be markers for households. Now I would love to say that this is going to be a free for all. My instinct says that you can just turn up for 11 o'clock. For one o'clock it's going to be busier but if you came and we were full we'd be able to tell you there was three o'clock as well. I fear that we are going to have to have some kind of booking in system for the three o'clock. That may well look like you can ring the vicarage 455 and leave your name, contact number and the number of people in your household. Um, and we'll probably put a form on the web page as well. A message through Facebook will get to us as well. We're not really sure what the capacity is because it depends on how many people that are in each household. The more people within a household, the more space we need around them, but the closer they can stand together. So it may well be that the capacity is 50, it may well be that the capacity is 30, it may well be that the capacity is 80. Until we work through with people's households and then put, because you'll have to come in to the nearest space and then we'll put the next household at the nearest available space to that until the lawn is full. Um, we have no idea. We There's lots of things we don't know in this year and this is definitely something that we don't know. We, we probably will look through this week to having some sort of sign-in system. At least then we have got a sense of how many people um, want to be there. So please um, watch this space uh, in the sense that there will be notices on Facebook, we'll put a notice on the website, um, there will be across social media or if you get the word that there is likely to be, it's likely to be busy and you just want to leave a phone message at the vicarage, you are very welcome to do that, 554682 or drop us an email, stpetersharton at gmail.com. That's for both churches, uh, it's not just for St Peter's at all. But at St Cuthbert's we, uh, we don't have the capacity to uh, crowd control in the same way. Somebody said can't we use the little playground. We could use the little playground which does have a gate at each side. But then we have a huge amount more paperwork to do because that's a public space. Whereas the churchyard is our space and we have all of that paperwork already done. Christmas Day there is likely to be a face-to-face -face service in the building at St Cuthbert's and that probably will still be at 10 o'clock. There won't be singing, we'll have carols to listen to but we can't join in so that will be a shorter service than normal but it will be communion. Everybody is welcome to go there. Um, if you are uh, gathering with many people from out of your household we would love to have you at the services that we are running. Please do um, have a care for other people so uh, it's beautiful how how careful people were for the market that was fantastic thank you so much for those people who came last week and who uh, who behaved impeccably well under covid restrictions um, if you are mixing with lots of people on uh, christmas at the 23rd and the 24th and you want to come to church on the 25th and um, please do make sure you keep your distance from uh, people who have not been mixing um, with people for months uh, the 27th there will not be a service there'll be a service online there will not be a service in our churches just so that we can try and have that little bit of quarantine period to keep everyone safe. That means that services will resume at St Peter's and St Cuthbert's on the 3rd of January. So there will be for St Peter's people, I think that makes it group C and D for St Peter's people, but there will be a worship card for you before that. Um, Keep an eye out. There will be one or two more messages than I would normally send through this week to the mail list so that we can make sure everyone knows at every point when the services are. 
and uh, we hope that we can see you on or offline at some point through this week. There will be a video for Christmas, I'm pretty sure. Um, but if we don't see you because you're going away, please travel very safely and take very good care. Wherever you are going is going to be equally as um, needing or keeping safe as you are here. Please do your absolute best to keep yourself safe and your loved ones safe so that we can be back together in the new year. But if this is my last missive before Christmas, have a peaceful and a joyful and a hopeful Christmas and let's hope for a healthier new year. Our worship this evening is led by I've absolutely no idea because I've got a message telling me and I've completely forgotten. So it, it will be a joyous surprise for me as well to find out who is leading our worship. And um, that does also give me an opportunity to say a huge thank you to the people who have continued to lead us online as well as offline, not just for our regular services, but for the special Christmas services as well. It is a huge joy for me to hear everybody taking part and it is a beautiful thing to see our congregations working together. So please enjoy this week's worship and uh, not just this week as in today Sunday but this week our Monday night longest night and I think if you look out somewhere there's a star visible before that what a perfect way to start our week for Christmas following the star to Christmas itself. Christmas Eve outside let's hope for the weather to be good or wrap up warm and brave it anyway for us to sing carols outside and then a blessed Christmas day and then a blessed rest. Enjoy our worship, stay safe and be blessed. Happy Christmas. Good evening and welcome to you all on this the fourth Sunday of Advent. In a moment of silence let us gather our thoughts before we offer our praise to our gracious God and his most holy Son, Jesus Christ.
Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Lord our God reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy and give him glory. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Keep awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world, a light no darkness can ever put out. Light a candle bright and tall for a love which knows no end. Love that comes to one and all, fear and hatred to append. Shine within our hearts today, come O oh love to us we pray. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name with all the angels in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the dawning light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Out of the depths I have called to you, Lord. Let your ears be open to hear my voice. My hope is in God's word. If you recorded all our sins, who could come before you? My hope is in God's word. There is forgiveness with you, Therefore, you shall be feared. My hope is in God's word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than those who watch for daybreak. My hope is in God's word. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. My hope is in God's word. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. My hope is in God's word. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, 
The king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel? saying, Why have you not built me a house, a cedar? Now therefore thus you shall, you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for, for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evil doers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges of my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled, and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you. He shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with the rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Your word is a lantern to our feet, and a light upon our path. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever. Amen. Your word is a lantern to our feet. Alleluia, alleluia. I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to bring you this good news. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose whom name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his word and pondered which sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have fond favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb a be and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to, to him the throne of his ancestors David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God, and now you, your relay of Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A couple of weeks ago, I wrote a sermon for Germany. The text they gave me was the second letter of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. It's not one of our Advent readings, but it's remarkably relevant. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-discipline. Back in March, when the pandemic began and we did not know what to expect, there was fear. Fear led to our following the instructions we were given for lockdown. We stayed in our homes, we washed food and quarantined bags and boxes, we only left our house for limited times. We did this more from fear than self-discipline or love. We did things for love, of course. In many places, people learnt the names of their neighbours for the first time. People offered to collect shopping or medicines, to walk dogs, to bring food to each other. But it was fear and discipline, power from outside, which we obeyed. We acted in love towards each other, but out of fear and discipline. Holy Week's sense of sacrifice and pain and loss and death seemed to go on for weeks, months. We held on to the hope of Easter tentatively, quietly, hope that in the midst of death was life, because Jesus' death destroyed our death and his rising to life restored our life. But it was tentative. Then there was some precious freedom. Go on holiday, go to the pub, go to restaurants. But that proved more dangerous and the virus spread again. So in came tears and local lockdowns. But this time it was different, harder. Fear, yes, but not in quite the same way as in the beginning. People did not submit to the discipline in quite the same way. There was less solidarity. Not the same outpouring of support for healthcare staff or quite the same offers of help for neighbours. And as the weather turned, everything seemed a little darker, even with the vaccine a small light of hope in the distance. And we had already faced a Christmas that would be different, but where we would still hold out and hold on to the real light of hope, the true light that was coming into the world which the darkness cannot overcome. But now today we see even stricter measures again, and I suspect that may drive more fear. So it's a good time to hear again that verse from Timothy. There's hope in it. Think of all those times in the Christmas story that we hear the angels proclaim, do not be afraid. And that is what we still need to hear. God has not given us a spirit of fear or of timidity, but of power, of love and of self-discipline. These power, love, self-discipline are active hope. Active hope is love. These give us a way to live for the months to come, trusting that the darkness will never overcome, that these things will pass and that there will be a new dawn and real celebrations when we will rejoice with one another freely again. Our future is in our own hands. Our future as individuals and as a community, as nations and as God's people together. And if we live and act in hope and in love, we will build a better future, not just for ourselves, but for our children and the children of the world. We must act not selfishly, but in love. We are called to remember that where one suffers, so do all suffer. Not only must we not forget our lonely neighbours who worry about their shopping in the winter months, 
but also the many charitable organisations who have completely lost their income this year and so struggle to support all sorts of people and causes. If we worry about families losing their jobs and homes in our own towns, how can we forget that in other places in the world, lives which were already precarious and relied on tourism face much worse? Places which have less health care, places where there is violence or fighting. They have been lost from our media and news this year. Do we forget to pray for them too? We must act with self-discipline. It's been a hard year, and everyone wants nothing more than a hug from a loved one for Christmas, to let grandchildren play with their grandparents, to visit a parent or spouse in a care home. As Christians, it is hard to say that Christmas is just one more day, because it is not. It is the feast of the Incarnation special to our faith. And yet so are our families special to us. And if we love our neighbour as ourselves, so are all those who are vulnerable, those who are lonely, those who have already isolated for months. We might have to restrain ourselves from the family celebrations, the drinks and dinners with close friends, the things people normally love to do at Christmas. Our self-discipline now sows the seeds of hugging our loved ones sooner next year. Every act of self-discipline is an act of love. It has often felt this year that we are powerless, powerless in the face of an invisible enemy, an invisible killer. As individuals in 2020, being told by our governments that we can only leave our houses for one hour per day, where we can go and how we must dress, does not feel like the modern free world. We are used to living in a modern free world, but again, we forget that this is not the case for many of our brothers and sisters around the world. We have power. It is ours to use. Isn't it our responsibility to do so? Isn't that love? This is the power of love. How we shop, how we vote, how we speak truth in today's world. Understanding how our selfish choices can harm the environment, cause climate change, encourage trafficking and child labour. But we could use our power to work for justice, to end oppression, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to see the captives freed, all those things Isaiah tells us. In our spending, in our travelling, in our ethical and charitable support, in our advocacy, in our teaching, in our prayer, in our love, we have the power to change the world. We should not hesitate to do so. That would be gospel good news today. That is love. God did not give us a spirit of fear. Do not be afraid, the angels say. He gave us power and love and self-discipline, and that is the spirit in which we must live. As we look into 2021, can we recognise that the COVID pandemic has given us an opportunity to recalibrate our world along the lines of love? An opportunity to change our habits for the better. We're called to love one another and to help each other flourish. That's why Jesus came to earth, to show us how. On a small scale, that means right now taking precautions, wearing masks, keeping our distance, out of self-discipline and under love, not out of fear and under order. On a global scale, we must relearn what it is to be human, dependent on each other and intimately connected, all brothers and sisters and children of the one God. Hopefully, that might give us more desire to work together, to end injustice, to end food poverty, to end famine to end the third world lack of access to education, clean water, healthcare, vaccines. God did not give us a spirit which turned the other cheek, which hesitated and walked on by on the other side. He gave us a spirit of love. This Advent 4, this last week of Advent, the theme is love. The spirit of love, the power, the self-discipline, 
the hope and the peace and the joy. That is the spirit that Advent takes forwards into Christmas as that comes alive. And as 2021 begins, we need more than ever to live that life, to live in that spirit, that all may flourish and none live in fear. For only then will we all know the life in all its fullness that Jesus came to earth to show us and to give us. Amen. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Heavenly Father, as we come to you in prayer, we do so in humility and awe. 
Be with us as we prepare our homes this Christmas to focus also on the coming of your kingdom and your wonderful gift of love to us of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to prepare our hearts and minds so that our actions and words may shine out the wonder that Jesus is our Saviour, generous, loving God. Hear our prayer. Father God, at Christmas time, voices ring out together with the angels throughout the world, singing of your love. We pray that you would bring into our troubled world and homes the same love and peace felt by Mary and Joseph on that first Christmas day. We pray for families who live in fear and are anxious of the pressures that daily life brings, especially for those children who have never known peace or safety and who daily live in fear of their lives. Pour your blessings on them so they may know your love. Generous, loving God, hear our prayer. Merciful God of all, give wisdom to those who rule in this world. As decisions are made at every level of society, we pray that you will move in the hearts of those deciding our rules and laws, that they seek the common good and fairness and equality is given to all. We particularly pray that all peoples of the world be given access to the coronavirus vaccines, regardless of their personal situation. Use us in your world to bring peace, hope and love so that we may see your heavenly glory ruling on this earth. Generous, loving God, hear our prayer. Lord God, as the shepherds and wise men knelt in reverence to you, in thanks we kneel before you to give thanks for the many blessings you have given us. We thank you for the freedom to worship without fear, that even in these months during Covid, you have given our church leaders and helpers the strength to hold us together in love and fellowship. We give you thanks for them and their dedicated commitment to us. Generous, loving God, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers for families separated because of Covid restrictions. We pray for all those who are suffering because of delayed surgery, because of the burden Covid has put on our health service. We pray for those for whom this is the first Christmas separated from a loved one, either through illness or death. Heavenly Father, give them peace in their lives and homes this Christmas. All-powerful God, we ask for your healing touch on all who are suffering illness, for those fearful and alone. We pray that all may feel your Spirit's healing presence. We bring before you all those known to us and those known only to you who are in need of your healing at this time. Generous, loving God, hear our prayer. Merciful God of heaven and earth, in these times of separation and isolation, give comfort and peace to those who are bereaved. May they find the strength to face the days ahead, especially during this Christmas time. We remember with love those we have lost. May they be raised into the fullness of God's presence. We remember especially this week Jean Johnson, and on their anniversary, John Daesh, Lyndon Cook, Ronnie Clark, Gladys Foster, and Susan Hales. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray in confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon us, scatter the darkness from before our paths, 
and make us ready to meet him when he comes in glory. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.